Hello and welcome to this uh, Blitz Report tutorial around uh, asset tracking uh, troubleshooting, uh, which is a it's quite a complex area around um, when you're moving things around your organisation um, from inventory and so on uh, through the install base. Um, Oracle provide uh, a concurrent request that uh, executes these uh, transactions. Uh, so, for example, you have the the asset creation, and then you have the asset move transaction. Um, what happens in the report? So, when these are, are, are run, uh, it will evaluate to see whether the asset already exists or not. For example. Um, and if it does, it, it's able to execute the move. So it could be that you're doing a transfer from uh, one organization to another, or you could be moving it from one location to another, etc., or, or across sub inventory and so on. Um, you see here we've got uh, the error messages. So this one here is unable to process. Make sure the asset is already created uh, for the for the instance, etc., uh, etc. Et so um, then what you can do is well. You could turn to the Oracle, um, the Oracle forum support forum, and there's one here around the asset tracking pending transactions, uh, and within here Oracle will helpfully provide um, some queries that you can then further analyze these error messages. So um, we're going to be going to take one of these. I'll just copy this query into um, my buffer there, and I'll open up. Blitz report. Now, Blitz report sits on all of the menus. So uh, you see here, you can also add it to any of the forms using uh, simple uh, personalization. Um, so if I go ahead and open this, you see here, I've, I've created the actual label for the report, which is just free text. And then I've put a description in place. Um, and then I'm just going to paste the SQL into here. Um, and, and so Basically, that's then a runnable um, SQL. Um, what I've done here earlier is, is I've added um, a parameter called status, um, and this will allow us to then pick different values, uh, so whether it's pending or complete and so on. Um, and furthermore, I can assign it to, to a given responsibility or, or user uh, site, etc. Um, so in this particular case, uh, I'm going to actually give it a, an operating unit assignment which is uh, vision um, so and we're particularly interested in uh, the uh, USA communication um, so that's the assignment done and then we can categorize it so in this case I've categorized it as Nginatics so in, in effect we now we've got a runnable report um, and we can just go ahead and run that. So, so I'll go ahead and pop in uh, pending because uh, I'm interested in, in looking at all the pending transactions that uh, assets asset tracking is, is trying to process. Um, so if I go ahead and run this, it should give us uh, a list of all of those transactions that it's, it's tried to run and, and it's failed obviously for, for the reasons mentioned in the log file. So in, in this report, you see here it opens already in, in Excel and um, over here we've got, our, we, we've got our actual parameters. You've got the SQL in here as well. If you, if you want to, to see that, um, you, know, you could uh, put it in here and then you could, you could follow up uh, any subsequent queries um, by having that, those parameters recorded for you. Um, Further things that you've got here is you've got the ability to change the report layout. So um, rather than disturbing IT resources, what well, the business user can actually um, change the layout of the report. But they wouldn't have this setup button here. This is reserved only for people with the technical SQL uh, skills. But uh, certainly a business user would be able to to edit um, the available columns here by simply sort of moving left and right, uh, very similar to folder functionality. Um, and you'd probably want to to put some some joins in here. This is a template report we've created here, um, which is is basically giving you the the serial number, the lot number, how many was transacted, um, what is the asset quantity, and what is the process flag. Um, so you see here the, this particular column install base FA location. I've hidden that, but it could easily be popped back into here. And again, you can you can sequence these. So 
you can just put in the number and it would it will change so from a user perspective they they have this functionality um as i mentioned it's very similar to folder tools um the other thing that they can do is they can set the output format so you know if they wanted to change away from excel uh, and use something else they could certainly do that um other things you can do here um, if you're developing um, you could actually set row limits uh, and time limits so that uh, if reports are going to be run over a long period of time, you might want them not to uh, be uh, returning so many rows and, and you might want them to time out if it gives a certain, it's a certain limit. Uh, although today's modern computers, uh, you don't tend to need these kinds of things, but still functionality is there. Um, you also have the ability to send the output directly to Unix, etc., and and so on. Um, and if we now go ahead uh, and run that, I'll just show you the report, what it looks like. And then we can take one of these uh, transaction IDs and then we can drill into it. Um, so if I was to take, for example, uh, one of these transaction IDs, um, I can then look at what types of transactions were being processed on it. So if I uh, go back to the setup, uh, and just save that. You see here we're now on version four, um, so we've we've captured all of the previous versions of SQL um, of the SQL report, and you could add comments in here. So this is probably ready for unit testing, um, and, and then you can just build up the audit history. Um, from a technology viewpoint, the Blitz report is uh, running directly through the concurrent. Uh, manager so you can see all of the requests that that you've run and then you can schedule as you would with any other concurrent request um, you know you can call on the outputs here um, or you could just simply uh, copy this request and then submit it as a schedule um, there are no concurrent programs involved here so you don't actually have to go to system administration and register it will just take this label and it, it will basically give it a, a prefix to Blitz report. So we, we keep these in a table so that you don't have uh, the overhead of, of having to register all your system administration. So it's much quicker from a development viewpoint. Now, if we have a look at the detail report, um, and as you see here, I'm just stepping through all the different reports. Um, this, this one here, uh, is for a specific transaction ID. And so I took the transaction ID, um, and again, this, this is from Oracle Support Forum. Uh, and then here I just added a, a very simple parameter, which is, is giving us the ability to put our transaction ID in. And you see here, this is the SQL, um, which is, is basically the other SQL that allows me to select those transaction IDs. And now when we go ahead, run this, it will uh, offer us up uh, the ability to uh, put in that transaction ID. And then that will just give us a, a full um, processing of that particular ID and what, what's happened to that asset uh, over the period of time. And you see here, it will open up and you'll see we've had several attempts at issuing from a particular field location. Um, so, you, you know, you would you would obviously extend these to include the, the field uh, location. And, you know, if you, if you wanted to, to know what the joins were for doing that, then it's very simple to, to just review one of our other reports. And you see here we've got um, uh, a number of different reports um, around asset tracking. And if we were to look at uh, this one, asset tracking, you see in here the SQL is um, obviously it will have things in like the organization name, um, the location name and so on. Um, this this is, um, so the Enterprise Command Center um, asset tracking uh, query that uh, we have basically, we've made it available on the EBS side, um, but equally you could go across to the dashboards and you could export uh, from there, but it would be to CSV. So we've replicated these on the EBS side um, to allow users to export data faster and to Excel. Um, but similarly, you, you can use uh, these SQLs to help you uh, take our template reports uh, and then enhance them to include what additional information you need. And you see here that, that all the joins are, are pre-built for you. 
Um, if I was to run this anyway, um, you'll see what uh, how, how the output looks. And let's click on run. Now, generally, with the with these uh, processing errors, the the issues are around um, things like asset category, asset location, um, or it could be that the asset's just not been created. So, so there are a number of different uh, reasons be behind why they fail. Um, but you you can further drill into um, the assets by looking at, at these this particular report, the ECC asset tracking report, and you can see here what the the usage code was. Um, you see here in service, uh, still in inventory, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, uh, and you can just go across, and you see here you've got all the information you would require. Um, you know the customer service interface, uh, install base, uh, transaction type that that brought us to here. You see here we've got WIP assembly and uh, all raft of different transaction types you see within the install base. Um, so there's various ones, miscellaneous receipts. Um, projects and so on, um, they're all available to, to review. Um, so these are the, I say, the reports I just wanted to show you today. Um, and as I mentioned before, um, Blitz report is, is keeping version controls. It's allowing users to tailor the report, but not to create a report. The actual creation process is only by uh, an authorized developer, if you like. Um, so, so Blitz Report is uh, free to use um, for 30 reports. Um, it, it's uh, available from the Nginatix download site. Um, you can obviously um, drop your SQLs in and, and create very quick reports directly to Excel. Um, and I say that there is no cost up to the 30 report limit. And thereafter, it's, it's a very simple uh, 10, $10 uh, per user license arrangements. Um, the application comes with uh, around 200 reports and uh, uh, as I mentioned uh, this particular video is available as a tutorial. Uh, we do have a number of other videos on the Nginatix um, website on the YouTube channel um, so we're not just covering assets and inventory and so on. Um, we also cover planning, financial accounting, uh, payables and receivables. So do, do have a look, uh, check, out, uh, check out the video. Um, and I say that, that's it for me today. And uh, thank you for listening and I uh, hope to see you again.